Okay, in the previous video we looked at, we already had some triangles drawn for us already and we labeled the sides, we used our trig definitions to answer that. These kind of problems, you are going to be doing the same thing. You do want to look for a triangle. However, this problem is different because it doesn't have the triangle drawn for you already. Also, what's happening is we're getting into a point where we're going to have to draw the triangle in a certain quadrant, quadrant one, two, three, or four uh, as the quadrants with graphing. So because of that, we have to use this information and decide where the triangle is going to be drawn at. Now, it's really important to tell which quadrant it's in because once we have that quadrant complete, that has certain sides are positive and certain sides are going to be negative. So it's really important that we figure out which quadrant it's in first before we draw the triangle. Here's the information that was provided for us. Tangent is a negative number, so tangent theta has to be negative. And also sine theta has to be less than zero, which means that sine is also going to have to be negative. So I want to find the quadrant where tangent is negative and sine is negative. And then once I, I find out which quadrant that is, then I'm going to go ahead and draw the triangle in one of those quadrants and then I can get this eventually once I have all the sides of the triangle complete. I want to find the quadrant where tangent is negative and sine is negative. We're going to use all students take calculus to find out which quadrant this belongs into. So when I go around and use that, all means everything's positive in the first quadrant, not the right one in our case here. S, students, represents sine. Sine is positive, everything else is negative. No, sine has to be, sine's negative here, so that's the wrong quadrant. Uh, take, down here, means tangent's positive, everything else is negative. Well, tangent's got to be negative, so that's not the right quadrant either. Then this one, cosine would be positive. Co uh, calculus represents cosine. Everything else is negative, which means that's the correct one. So I know that I got to draw the triangle in the fourth quadrant based on my sine rules that I just talked about. To do that, you're going to start the triangle at the origin. You'll draw a line down there. We're drawing it in the fourth quadrant. You want to bring the line back up to the closest x-axis, never the y-axis. You don't want to do this. You always bring it back to the closest x-axis. The reason why is because your angle that we have is always measured from the x-axis. So this is going to be what your triangle looks like and now we have to label it based on the information provided. So the information provided here, we're going to use our definition for tangent. Tangent is the same thing as opposite over adjacent. So that means that opposite is this side right here, it's across from our angle, and adjacent is 4. Now typically you'll see these problems written with the minus sign out front like this. So when you see a problem written that way, you have to decide whether the 3 has a negative sign or 4 has a negative sign. In this case, because it's drawn in the, in the fourth quadrant, this number is below the x-axis, which means that that's going to be the one that has the negative sign on it. So, Therefore, if I take negative 3 over 4, that will give me negative 3 fourths. That's why it's important to tell which quadrant that you're in, because based on that, we can tell which side is negative and which side is positive. Hypotenuse, however, is always going to be positive regardless of which quadrant you're in. So it doesn't matter which of these four quadrants you're in, hypotenuse always is going to be positive. Now I can recognize that this is going to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so I could find out that this side would be 5, or I could use Pythagorean theorem, negative 3 squared plus 4 squared would be 25, square root of that would give you 5. So either way, you're going to get a 5 uh, for your missing side by using a 3, 4, 5 triangle, or again, Pythagorean theorem. I have all three sides complete now. I'm ready to use my definitions to answer that. When looking at this, I look first of all at sine. Sine is opposite, so again it's across the triangle or opposite from my theta, that's negative 3, over hypotenuse which is going to be 5. So negative 3 fifths is going to be my sine. I'm going to flip it and I get negative 5 thirds reciprocal, that would be my cosecant. Next one I want to find cosine. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. This side would be my adjacent side over hypotenuse here. So 4 fifths would be cosine 5 fourths is your secant. The last one I want to do is cotangent. Now cotangent would be the reciprocal of the original problem that was given to us. So the reciprocal of, of tangent is going to be cotangent. So this will be negative 4 thirds. And then that would be the answer for this one. So 
again, uh, this information they give you, sometimes instead of giving you this, they may actually tell you right away uh, which quadrant it's actually in. We'll look at a couple of examples like that. But for the ones that don't tell you which quadrant it's in, this is kind of how you have to look at it. You want to uh, look at the signs for both of those and from that determine by all students take calculus which quadrant it's in. That's the most important thing when you're setting these problems up.